Okay, in this question, we're going to take a look at this UBC final exam question. It's from 2016 final exam. It's question 4.3. And it's a multiple choice question. Here you can see it says, let f of x be a continuous function to find for all real numbers x. Suppose f is increasing on the intervals of negative infinity to negative 1 and 3 to infinity, decreasing on negative 1 to 3. And it has the property that f of negative 1 is 2 and f of 3 is 1. And we're asked to figure out how many zeros does f of x have. OK, so this is sort of an intuitive question. Um, there's no need to show your work on this question. The goal is to sort of use these properties of the, the function that we're given to figure out the number of zeros. You don't need to have an exact sketch, but we want to get an idea of the function. So let me uh, go here. And let's see. The first two things, and we were given a bunch of properties. The first thing that give us the most information is that these two points, f of negative 1 is 2, and f of 3 is 1. f of negative 1 is 2 means that the point negative 1, 2 is on the graph. Right? That means that when x is negative 1, y is 2. So this point on the graph. And similarly, f of 3 equals 1 means that when x is 3, y is 1. So that means 1, 2, 3, 1 like this. These two points are on the graph. Then we can use the other properties to figure out uh, basically how we fill in the rest, roughly. So for example, f is increasing on the intervals from negative infinity to negative 1. That means, here's negative 1, right? So that means that to the left of negative 1, the function has to go down. Now here's the thing. It doesn't need to have a 0 here. Well, a function can decrease and go down like this, and just keep going down indefinitely. On the other hand, it's actually possible for the function to be decreasing but not go down to negative infinity. For example, it could go like this. Right, you could go down and then sort of level off, but it's still decreasing over time as you go further out. And for that reason, we don't know what's going to happen here. Um, again, it could go in either direction. On the other hand, from negative 1 to 3, uh, it's going to be decreasing. The function is going to be decreasing. That means that the function has to decrease from 2 to 1, and it has to do that continuously. What I mean by that is it can't go down and then back up or, you know, up and back down, it has to be decreasing the whole way. And for this reason, we know there's no zero in between this interval, negative 1 to 3. And finally, it's increasing from 3 to infinity, so that means it has to go up. Once again, there's no zero that can be possible here because it has to be uh, increasing the whole time. Okay, so that means in total, there could be one zero, but there isn't guaranteed to be one zero. So it's either one or zero, and we cannot tell with the information that we're given. And so the correct answer is we cannot determine with the information given. And that's pretty much it for this question. Again, the idea is to use the properties of the function that we're given to sketch out a rough sketch of the function and how it possibly can look like. And in the end, we don't know for sure if it has um, what how, the number of zeros that a function has. If you found this helpful and you're interested in a full guide for this entire past exam, as well as other past exams, check out my full solution guide at the link below this video. It has step-by-step -step written explanations and solutions, and it can help you study for your exam more effectively and also save time. Thanks for watching, and I wish you the best of luck with your studies.